Hi there Facebook, it's Kamal Fernandez here with another ooh, live um, on my uh, series that I've been doing on training the dog in front of you. Ooh, ah. gotta, get out of there my you shock eater. Um, so I thought I'd do another quick live. Firstly, thank you everybody for um, that has posted um, comments from our Crufts weekend. Um, obviously I've shared stuff whilst I was there. Uh, hugely grateful for everybody's um, kind words, comments, and um, about <coughs> the dogs and how they worked. Um, it, whoop, oh. out there. Oh. it really does mean a lot um, <coughs> to have so much support, so I really, really am grateful for that. Back to these guys now, uh, on uh, Sunday night, had somebody come to look after them, and they were wild, so you can imagine how, uh, um, how the fun that was at 10 o'clock at night or 11 o'clock at night, um, playing with these guys, but all is well. So Cross was... You know, super fun. Um, I'll be doing another um, live about that. Um, and it was it was really great. The dogs worked really, really well. I was so happy with them. Um, and obviously it was a super successful uh, weekend for members of my Obedience Fanatics group, uh, in particular Kat Farrance, um, with our Australian Shepherd Grace, got placed in the um, uh, on this Saturday. And amazingly, uh, a member of that group, Julie Rowlands, with her incredible Yoshi, won the championship. So that was a huge, huge, huge moment for Julie. And obviously, as um, someone that coaches her, that woo, <laughs> that was a, you know a huge, um, a fantastic moment um, to share with uh, uh, one of your um, students or your, um, that you've been involved in part of their, their journey. So hugely exciting for everybody. Again, um, personally, I was really, really pleased with both the dogs, which brings me on to the, the topic of today's live um, in my series about training the dog in front of you and that is knowing to meet your dog's needs um so i'm going to talk about that in a little bit more detail uh, just to uh share with you what's been going on obviously i um have also got an upcoming um summit that i'm going to share some details of and thank you for those of you that have shown uh or shared i should say can you get the toy not me um lovely comments about um the upcoming television series that I've been involved with, which is called The Dog Academy, which is yet, to, they've yet to have an official date, but I know it's imminently going to be released, and I'm super proud to have been involved with that project, and um, that is something that I'm really, really excited for everybody to see, and again, thank you all for your kind words and voices of positivity and optimism about that project, so that's going to be something that's uh, really, really exciting. So, Talking about training the dog in front of you, one of the most important things that you need to consider is knowing to meet your dog's needs. Certainly when you're um, in a competitive environment, your dog may need certain um, things considered into its preparation um, to help it get the best out of that dog in the day. But even if you're not um, training a dog for sports, just thinking about your dog's needs in life. What does that dog need to allow it to flourish in a situation, whether it be taking the dog to the vet, whether it be taking the dog um, to on a journey to a cafe, um, what does that dog need to in order for that dog to feel safe, secure, confident, and in order to be at their best? Get off you, little vicious. Mm. So, for example, oh, let me just clean up after this puppy. If you have a dog like a garden breeder dog, good boy. Uh, and that, and you have a, a dog that's aware of its environment, you would need to take a different approach to, oh, hang on one second all, to some other breeds of dogs. Say, for example, a really gregarious, uh, outgoing gun dog, you might not have to do so much work, proprietary work, on getting that dog environmentally sound, or so it could be comfortable and confident in the environment. If you have a dog that's a little bit more fearful, making sure that you... Um, allow for space around that dog, space around that dog, ensuring that you advocate for the dog as and when needed. So if people want to um, be uh, you know, intrusive with that dog or invade that dog's personal space, you are, oh, feisty little bugger. You are um, advocating for that dog and you are um, ensuring that they feel safe and they don't feel um, uh, cornered or um, that people aren't violating that dog's uh, yeah, personal space. So it's really important, get the toy instead, it's really important that you're aware of your dog's needs 
in any given situation and you put proprietary steps in to accommodate for that. So, for example, you know, Crofts was a great um, uh, example of that where preparation is absolutely key. So, in the instance of the two dogs that I took, Gurley and Kinder, they have very um, sound temperaments. Their baseline temperament is very, very sound. But Gurley is a dog that definitely is more sensitive to the environment than um, Kinder would be. And it's not, she's definitely not a dog that's fearful or apprehensive about their situations, but she would definitely get a little bit more anxious uh, in busy environments and around strange dogs. Um, and uh, she's, she's a dog that um, is very, very social, but she wouldn't like the massive dogs. She would feel a little bit uncomfortable in those environments. So that's something that we would have to uh, factor in because obviously it crushes a lot of dogs. Now for a dog like Kinda, Kinda is super social, largely indifferent and neutral to dogs, he always has been. So we would, with a dog like that, you would have to do far less preparation. Um, or you would need to be less considerate to um, that dog's, get that toy, that dog's um, taking notice of the environment and obviously the mass of dogs. Now, that isn't to say that as a, a, a responsible, look at a toy, um, a responsible part of ownership is to be aware of your dog's sensitivities, aware of your dog's body language, and constantly monitor those um, changes if the dog is getting stressed, anxious, and so forth. But as a rule of thumb, um, a dog like Kinder, he has a very, very sound temperament. So he's, he's very neutral in environments, he isn't bothered by dogs, he is certainly not bothered by people, uh, and so forth. A dog like Gurley, bit more sensitive to other dogs on um, being in her personal space so you would have to factor that into your preparation obviously she's also she's an older dog now so she's six so she's had a lot of that brought into somebody's i've just tried to what i did was barricade the tripod in hope that these um little hooligans wouldn't um kill the tripod one you have attempted to pull it through the wires so let me just adjust the camera don't work with dogs and animals people but being an advocate for your dog is really, really important to train the dog in front of you. Additionally, when you're talking about preparation, preparing them for life. So, for example, if you have a dog that isn't comfortable with people. So, um, my giant schnauzer um, swipe. Um, he's a guarding breed of dog. And he's a dog that I would say is indifferent to people and dogs. He's certainly not um, over friendly with people and dogs. But that doesn't mean that he's aggressive, he just goes, I'm not really interested in them. So, for example, if I needed other people to um, uh, do a vet check on him or to do a grooming session on him, I would need to do some proprietary work to ensure that he was comfortable with strangers coming into his personal space. The breed by nature should be aloof and he's very much of that ilk. He's got a super temperament and that he actually doesn't... Uh, interact with people or dogs at all, even on a dog walk, but he definitely, oh, hang on, Baba. he definitely is a dog that um, needs to have, oh, hang on, isn't it all the way when you're trying to clean up after them? He isn't a dog that you would um, have people randomly coming up to him and fussing him and interact with him, and, and that's something that I have no issue with. Um, he certainly isn't aggressive, he certainly isn't fearful, he's just indifferent to people, he has no interest in them. He's very much a dog that's handler focused, which is very typical of that type of dog. So it's really important to understand the, the dog that you are um, working with, training with, living with, and ensure that you meet their needs in any given situation. Often the assumption that we have is that because we own a dog in a, uh, a society and a culture that um, you know everybody wants to fuss your, fuss your dog, or uh, with, certainly with puppies, or can I see your puppy? It's a given that that puppy should accept it, irrespective of the um, the dog's personal uh, characteristics and personal choices, or the dog's individual choices, I should say. So making sure that you are aware of your dog's needs is a huge part of training the dog in front of you. Often, choosing not to be aware of the dog's needs and not to be aware of the dog's sensitivities can result, can you get that instead? Good. Um, can result in the dog um, f feeling distrustful of the situations that you put them in. So I'm a huge one for advocating for my dogs and also not putting my dogs in situations where I feel that they're going to be uncomfortable 
because I want to maintain that trust they have in me, that I'm always going to have their back, for want of a better term. So that's a huge part of, you know, rearing dogs that are confident, creating dogs that have trust in you, and nurturing the relationship that you, um, that you hope to have with them. Um, so just, again, another nuance of training a dog in front of you, making sure that you meet your dog's needs. And again, specifically for sports preparation, think about what your dog needs. Does it need to be taken to lots of different environments? Does it need to have some confidence around other people? Does it need to be have confidence around other dogs? Does it need to have noises um, uh, conditioned and counter-conditioned and <coughs> desensitized um, to, in its foundation learning and so forth? So really think about um, the, um, the dog that you're dealing with, the characteristics of that dog and how you can build confidence constantly. All right, just some musing there, musings there about training dogs in front of you. I am going to do um, some li a live with members of my Obedience Fanatics group, probably not this week, probably next week, um, talking about their experiences post-crust, which is going to be super fun. I'm really looking forward to that. Just trying to get everybody's diary in, um, in coordination. Um, additionally, if you're interested in signing up for Obedience Fanatics, it's still open all this, this um, week. Um, so if you're interested in signing up for that and you currently do Obedience or even a dog sport and you want me as your coach, you can follow the link that I'll share in the, the thread and you can sign up to have um, be part of that group. Now, <clears throat> the group, the, um, there's uh, two courses. There's the Obedience Fanatics group, which looks at all the exercises and um, has a lot of content to do with uh, all the uh, exercises for obedience. Um, and there's also the heel work course, which looks specifically at heel work. So again, you can sign up for both courses. Uh, and you can become part of the VIP group where you get myself as a coach, where you can wow. also get additional content. Um, you can do lives and you can submit videos for review and observations from me. And obviously, as I've just said, you know, the group has been hugely successful. Um, and they're phenomenal in what they, they have achieved. And even just the, the energy and the positivity in the group is is amazing. I'm incredibly proud of all the people in there and what they, how they conduct themselves, how they are with their dogs and so forth. Um, but I'm hoping to, as I said, to get a couple of them online uh, and share their experiences with you of post crafts. That'd be really fun to have that conversation. Um, but yeah, from me, from these guys, I'm gonna, unless there's any questions, I'm just gonna check. Let me just make sure there's, oh. if there's any questions, can you get toys? You're getting tired now. Getting tired now. The pups. Yeah. Oh, tell you that. That's a good girl. Mm -hmm. Good. All right. I don't think there's any questions. As I said, I'll share the links. The other. Oh, before I go, is the other course that is also open this week is my oh. relabeling reactivity course, which is a course that I put together. Um, quite a while back now which looks specifically at reactivity and overcoming reactivity uh, and everything to do with what the, training the dog overcoming the challenges and also helping and supporting the handler so if you want if you're interested in that if you have a dog with reactivity challenges i know several people have messaged me the course is now currently open um so have a look at that oh do you have close off do they close yes so the um the, the vip group you can purchase the courses and self-study at any point, but if you want to um, get access to the VIP group, that is only open until Sunday, I believe it closes. So I'll, I'll, I'll put some more messages to ensure people are aware of the timeline. I know people are busy, um, but if you um, want to sign up, yeah, jump on board, and we, we, the more the merrier. It's a great group of people, as I said, incredibly successful, uh, and they're just a brilliant bunch to work with, and I look forward to having some of you join. But right, for me, from, uh, from us, <laughs> Um, before these guys get too fidgety, I will love you and leave you and enjoy the rest of your, your day. See you later.